Hello, my name is Kelsey Yates, and I'm a current third year student at Mississippi State University College of Veterinary Medicine. This morning, I have the pleasure of interviewing doctors Caroline Betbees and Becky Tail, who are the clinical ophthalmology professors here at MSU CVM. So I figured we could just start things off by having some introductions, maybe introduce yourself, where you're from, where you went to school, things like that. Um, I can start. Uh, my name is Caroline Betbees. I am a veterinary ophthalmologist. I attended uh, Mississippi State University College of Veterinary Medicine in the dark ages <laughs> um, back between 1998 to 2002, um, where I got my DVM degree. And then I did um, an internship at Mississippi State. And after that, followed that with a residency in comparative ophthalmology at Purdue University. Um, I have been a clinical teacher at Mississippi State since 2013 now. Hi, I'm Becky Tell. Um, I'm originally from Birmingham, Alabama, and I also went to Mississippi State um, from 2007 to 2011 for undergrad and got a bachelor's in animal and dairy science. And then I, um, I also was in the um, early entry program at Mississippi State for vet school. And so I went into vet school in 2011 and graduated in 2015. And then I went on to do a rotating internship at the University of Tennessee um, for one year. And then I did a residency for three years in comparative ophthalmology at the University of Wisconsin. And then I came to join the faculty here at Mississippi State in 2019 to join my previous mentor and friend, Dr. Betbees, uh, for the service that she started here. What really struck both of your interest in ophthalmology? Um, well, I really didn't even know about ophthalmology when I started vet school. I didn't know that that was even a specialty that you could do. Um, and when I was a junior in vet school, I did an externship with a veterinary ophthalmologist and just thought it was a really neat specialty for a number of reasons. But at the time, I had... Um, you know, seen a couple of patients come into her that could not see um, because they had cataracts and she was able to do cataract surgery for them. And then they immediately could see after cataract surgery. So that was something that really struck a chord with me. Um, I really love being able to just like help animals have a better quality of life. Um, and it really progressed from there because there are a lot of things that ophthalmologists get to do that are really neat. But um, that was something that really struck a chord with me, especially being someone that had not ever seen that kind of thing before. And my road was a little different because I um, began working at a specialty hospital, which once again, Dr. Betvies and I had overlapped a little bit. Um, we didn't overlap there, but we worked at the same practice in Birmingham. Um, I was a technician, but she worked there as a doctor, um, not at the same time, but with an ophthalmologist there. So I did that before I was even in veterinary school um, and worked very closely with the ophthalmologist there. And I really thought it was really interesting. And especially from the technical side of it, I really liked it diagnostics, taking care of those patients was really rewarding to me in that setting. Um, and I thought the surgery was really cool. Um, so I went into veterinary school wanting to do ophthalmology, but then I found a love for internal medicine as well. And so I had a moment where I had to kind of figure out what I wanted to do. Um, but in the end, you know, we really get to see all different types of diseases um, and still very much get to see those internal medicine type cases that manifest to the eye. And that really just was very interesting to me. Um, I actually did not really have a strong interest in surgery. Um, even through vet school, it was not like my favorite thing. So that was something I kind of had to overcome, but really ophthalmic surgery is really interesting and cool. And so um, just sort of like Dr. Betby's, like I sort of evolved over time, but mine just kind of really started. And I was like, maybe I just want to be a specialist of some type. I don't know if it's ophthalmology or another. And then I went to all the different ones and I said, no, but it's definitely ophthalmology. <laughs> um, so that was just kind of where mine grew and it just kept blossoming from there. Well, that's wonderful. 
Um, I know the ophthalmology service at MSUCVM is really thriving right now. Um, so what does kind of an average day look like for you guys? Wow, that is a great question, Kelsey. It seems like every day is different. <laughs> um, we have been very busy and I'm so thankful that our program has grown so much over the past few years um, in order for us to be able to serve so many people in our state and surrounding states. Um, we get a lot of referrals for ophthalmic diseases that are either very challenging to diagnose or challenging to manage. And so um, a day could be really like all appointments where we're seeing a lot of different appointments with some emergencies thrown into the mix. Um, we could be seeing like horses on a certain day where we're even doing some procedures on them where they're like a sedated standing procedure. So it could be like appointment turns into a procedure. Um, we also can have days that are dedicated to surgery. So um, we really have a wide array of things and, and kind of just um, talking about what Dr. Tell was saying is the one great thing about ophthalmology is if you like a lot of different species, it's a really good um, specialty. But also if you like both surgery and medicine and you have a hard time to decide, like you don't want to give up one of those, <laughs> this is a really good specialty. And I kind of felt that way when I was a student because I really like both of those things and it really combines both of them really well. And now we also... Um we kind of are, are all over the place a little bit. We work out of multiple locations. So we work out at a satellite clinic um, here in Starkville, which is where I'm at right now um, for part of the week. And then we're at the vet school for part of the week. And then Dr. Betbees and I actually go down to um, Flowood to our animal emergency referral center um, about every other week now too. So our average day can really look like anything, like she said. Um, but usually we're able to, you know, get everything wrapped up within, um, you know, within the work day, which we also really like about that too. <laughs> um, so we can squeeze a lot of stuff into a good eight to nine hours in the day, which is, is really fun and, and keeps you on your toes. What are some of the like goals and expectations you have um, with the students who are participating on the ophthalmology rotation every day? By the time that we get them, um, the students are in their fourth year. Um, and so our rotation, um, we, we do give them a little bit more responsibility in terms of, you know, they get to go in and they do a full ophthalmic exam before we're ever in there and they get to get the history from the client. Um, and they do all of that in, in front of the client, which, you know, was kind of interrupted by COVID, which was really, really weird um, to, to kind of adjust to. Um, but I think that's a really special thing that they get to do because um, it can be a little bit nerve wracking and, and hard to, to do things like that in front of owners. So they get to go in and do a full ophthalmic exam and really put their brain to work before they even talk to us. Um, then they present the case to us and we go in together. We try to show them all the lesions that we're seeing and explain what all that means. Um, and then if we have any inpatients, um, they take care of them in the morning and the evening. They scrub in with us on some surgeries. Um, and sometimes they're even allowed to do some of the surgery and do some suturing for like some of the more simple procedures. Um, so they're very, very heavily involved. Um, and we do a lot of teaching stuff with them as well, which I'll kind of let Dr. Betbees talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, um, we are so fortunate to be able to teach each group. So they spend two weeks on ophthalmology. So every two weeks we're getting new students. And since they're senior students, they already know a lot. Um, and they don't know that they know a lot, but they do. Um, and so we have several learning activities that we do with them. Just a couple are like some special labs that we do with them where we teach them more advanced ophthalmic diagnostic skills. Um, and the main one that we do is um, 
called the fundic exam, which is where you look at the retina and the optic nerve. And that can be like a pretty difficult part of the ophthalmic exam. And they really love that because they get to do that at lab with their own animals. So that's very fun. Um, they also do some presentations and do some things where they um, read journal articles and learn about how to learn new information even and grow like once they're out in their veterinarians in the world. Um, the way that you stay current is reading articles. And so we practice that with them as well. So they get to do a lot of things hands-on with our patients. And we see a lot of patients. That's one thing in ophthalmology. It's kind of a high volume type of specialty. So they get to practice, 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 which really is helpful to them and feeling confident. What would you say you like most about working with students every day? I really like um, just there's like a renewal of kind of just a rejuvenation when you see like the new people in our field um, just coming up and being really enthusiastic about some things because just like with any job, sometimes we take a little bit for granted what we get to do and and what we're um, what we're used to and to see it through somebody else's eyes is always really, really inspiring to me. Um, and I really just like to be there to mentor them, to really try to, um, set them up for success in their career, not only with, you know, actual vet medicine, but also with, you know, boundaries and surviving this career and making sure that it's, um, very, a very happy life for them. And so I just love seeing things through their eyes and how excited they get about different things that maybe I have forgotten how exciting that can be. Um, and so that just really rejuvenates my soul, especially when it's day in, day out. Sometimes maybe you're seeing the same stuff, but from somebody else's eyes, it really can provide you a different perspective. And that's my favorite thing about working with students. Yeah, I think that's great. I I feel the same way. They are just really um, refreshing a lot of times as far as, you know, as an ophthalmologist, we do see some cases that are, you know, we see them over and over and over again, um, certain types of cases. And so when we are able to explain it to a person that has never seen that before, I think that is, um, really special, um, to be able to do that. Um, I also really love teaching students about being a vet and being like, like having a good, like human animal bond type of situation. And, and I think that a lot of students really appreciate, um, appreciate that on the ophthalmology rotation, because one of our major goals is really to make animals and people have like a happier life. <laughs> so I think they're able to get that from being on ophthalmology. I know I'm personally super excited to get to the ophthalmology rotation in just a few months and, and work with you guys. I've heard just tons and tons of amazing stories of, of students who have gone through that rotation and really enjoyed it. Um, what opportunities are there for a student who really did enjoy your ophthalmology rotation and are interested in opto but want to be general practitioners, don't want to pursue a specialty? Oh, yeah, we actually have several opportunities for that. So we have, you know, definitely lots of opportunities if a person was like, hey, I want to pursue maybe being an ophthalmologist. It's really great to get to know us and be able to help us with research and that type of thing. But if you were interested in being just a really great private practitioner, especially good at opto. Um, we have several opportunities. Um, Dr. Tell and I teach in a lot of the elective classes um, that are senior level. So, you know, if there is a class on the feline patient, we're teaching in that. If there's a class in, you know, systemic um, diseases or endocrine diseases, we're teaching in that. So that's good because we're kind of peppered around um, teaching in different higher level courses. But we actually have our own course as well um, that we 
spend two weeks learning intense ophthalmology. And I think that is a really good launching point for students that have an interest. Um, and where they take that is really up to them, but they get to do a lot of things that they might not have gotten to do on the rotation. So surgical practice and things like that, as well as just learning lots of information. We also have an ophthalmology club um, that is newly formed. If you were to offer a singular piece of advice to either current or prospective students um, who actually want to actually pursue the ophthalmology field, uh, what would what would that look like? What would that be? Well, I would say. Um... I'm glad, first of all, because <laughs> it's a great field. Um, and I love to have new enthusiastic members in our profession. Um, but I also think I would give them the advice of um, making sure that you stay well-rounded, that you try hard in every subject, not just ophthalmology, and that you're not just focused on like one thing um, because there's so much to learn and there are so many opportunities for growth. Um, and also it was really important to your professors to respect the amount of time that they're putting into teaching you, even if it's not something that you think you're going to do for the rest of your life. Um, so really trying very hard in every uh, rotation that you're in and every class that you're in and just putting your best foot forward, I think is a really important thing. I definitely agree with that. And it's probably the most important thing of about everything. But I also, um, that kind of goes along with that is, um, just remembering that you really want to put your best foot forward, even in your first two years of vet school, like during the academic part, because it can be very difficult. And this is certainly not saying that you have to have straight A's or anything like that, because I certainly don't want to set anybody up to think that you have to be perfect because no one is. But it is really important if you want to pursue um, training afterwards that you have a strong academic background um, because you can't change that moving forward. So just making sure that you're well-rounded and staying focused um, on your goals and knowing that you might want to do something in the, in the future, I think is really important. Um, and also just keeping an open mind because like I said, I wanted to do ophthalmology and then I got scared because I didn't love doing a spay. Um, but that's very different than what I do now. So just to keep your options open and your mind open, because you never really know, you know, what you can overcome. You're much stronger than you think. And if you really want something, you can really find ways to adjust and then end up enjoying it in the end. So keeping an open mind, I think is really important. That's some wonderful advice. Thank you guys for sharing that. Is there anything else you guys would like to add that we didn't go over? I am so thankful when, that when I was a young person that I joined the profession of veterinary medicine. And I just I love that there are so many people that still want to do this job um, because I really feel like the statement where they say, like, you never work a day in your life if you love your job or whatever it is, you know, um, I think that is so true. Um, I have just been so blessed in my life to be able to be a veterinarian and and work with animals and all of these young people surrounding me. So I just feel like um, just really thankful and glad that there are so many people that still want to do this profession. And I just want to say that um, I am obviously very thankful to be here, um, but even to be in this specialty, um, I was glad that you asked about general practitioner options because um, our field has really taken a turn um, for the better, I think, where, you know, it, it doesn't have to be that you love every single thing, every single day. Um, you know, like it's not your favorite thing, but if you really are good at something like ophthalmology or surgery or medicine, um, you can really use those strengths out in general practice and, you know, put, put that foot forward and, and provide really exceptional care to animals without even having to come to the specialist level. So I think it's important for people to recognize um, that's why I feel like Dr. Bettbees and I, our job is so important at the university to really, 
you know, reinforce that to students that, hey, this is what we love to do every day, day in, day out with the complicated stuff. But this is something that you can definitely do in general practice and provide really exceptional care. And that's what I think is really important about our specialty, but all the other specialties too. So um, just to say that general general practice, you know, you can do a lot out there and um, really be a good advocate for patients and clients alike. And that is just really inspiring to me. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your busy lives to, to do this interview uh, on behalf of myself and the admissions committee. Um, just thank you very much. Really appreciate it. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye.